Okay, project for today. I kind of forgot to film just before I started, but right here is where I had the streaming computer set up. I didn't get the camera out to show you what it looked like beforehand, but here's a photo of what that looked like. So today, what we're going to do is start working on getting the built-in desk set up here. I went and grabbed several sheets of this here plywood. This is basically two foot by four foot pre-cut stuff. This was like $24 a piece. Um, only got two sheets of that. And then I got a couple of pieces of like eight or $9 OSB. The idea is going to be using this side rail right here, connecting some brackets to that, putting some two by fours on, and then we're gonna put the desk basically right here. I haven't 100% decided how I'm going to do it yet, but I think I wanna kinda go corner like this maybe. So the desk will come along here, maybe it'll come down this way a little bit, haven't quite figured that out. But the generic plan is to attach two by fours with some brackets to this side rail. But as you can see, even with this board here, we still have some space. So I'm going to cut some other two by four pieces to space it out like this. Then we're gonna have vertical pieces like this. Obviously they probably won't be this tall because that's really tall for a desk. But anyways, I'm going to get started on this. Got to finish moving a few things, got the ice maker there. And we're at least gonna get started building this thing. It's one of those deals where I have sort of a basic idea in my head, but I don't really know what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna figure things out as we go. But anywho, I'm gonna get some of this stuff moved and get some measurements, start cutting some things, and I'll show you when I've made some progress. Okay, so here we have this piece of wood with these brackets on here. And these will interface just like this with that side rail. Um, spacing, I haven't quite figured out yet, but I guess I should probably get rid of these bits of rubber that are in here and some of the garbage. Gross. I didn't have a screwdriver, so I'm just using a plastic spoon. <laughs> but in theory, these little carriage bolts will slide in here. Oh, and they'll get those. Um, at least fit in like this. Not quite. Give me a few minutes, let me figure this out. I might have to grind a notch or something in here to get these things in, but yeah. But anyways, that's the basic plan for now. I will be back. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So. This is our wall mount board that the desk is going to attach to in assorted ways. As you can see here, we've got some brackets in the back and those pick up this rail. By the way, I just wound up taking out these two screws and sliding my bolts in and then putting them back in there. These things bolt on here, which attaches this board on, but as you can see, it's a little bit flexible because we're just using Simpson corner ties that I bent to an angle to get this roughly straight up and down. So you might wonder, what good is this? Well, this thing is going to accomplish two different things the way it's mounted. First off, it's going to give us forward and back stability. When these are clamped down, this is not going to slide this direction at all. And the other thing it's gonna do is provide some rigidity in this direction. It may not seem that way because it flexes, but essentially what we're gonna do is have another board, well, we're gonna have to put a spacer in here, but there's gonna be another board that goes up like this. There's going to be one back here, and one up here, and then our desk is gonna go on top of that. These are going to be screwed off to the floor using some angle brackets. And then off of those, because we're going to have basically one board like this, but it's gonna be something to this effect, 
So that's going to tie in in that corner, make it really rigid. We're going to come all the way over here. Then we're going to have another vertical board, and that is also going to tie into the floor using angle brackets. Now, I might pick up this rail here instead. The floor is plywood with a rubber coating, so I may use some brackets and screws just to stabilize things. But for actual structure, I'll probably add another bracket right here. So I haven't 100% decided yet how this is all going in here and exactly what size this piece of plywood is going to be. Right now it's four feet long and that comes out to about here, which is way too wide. So probably gonna chop that down at least a foot, maybe put some corners in it or chop off the corner so it's not sharp. But the main thing is, is to have the desk somewhat cantilevered out. So it's gonna be supported back here and on these two sides. And this corner here is going to be roughly floating. That way I can get under there with my chair easily and not have to worry about hitting stuff with my anti-tippers and ripping all this stuff out. So anyways, that's where we're at for right now. That's the basic concept, subject to change, of course. So I'm going to continue working on this and, oh, and according to my watch, it looks like we're gonna have rain starting here soon. So anyways, I'll be back. Okay, we're making some progress. I'm a little bit tired drilling holes and using three and a half inch screws with a uh, T15 or T20 bit. Anyways, ta-da! So here's our basic structure. Um, this side's still a little bit floppy. Over here though, this is like solid. We've got some brackets attaching to the floor and we've got our stack of stuff over here. I'm thinking now that I might run some sort of board at an angle up here that comes out, something like that. But then again, I don't know. I'm just building this as we go. But uh, anyways, oh, I forgot my tape measure. It's sitting over there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna screw in a little more and I will be back. Okay, I think, uh oh, that looked crooked. Is that crooked? No, we're good. <laughs> Wide angle lens. I think we're making progress here. I think we're just about getting to the point where we can put the top on this thing. So I wound up running an arm down here so that we can cantilever this edge. And I've intentionally set this back in a little ways on both sides. That way I can get underneath the desk, get my chair underneath here. And I did calculate for the F3, which is slightly taller than this chair. But right now, even with this board here, I still have plenty of clearance, but the desk is gonna be all the way up here. Depending on my tilt, I will still have to use the swing away, but at least the desk is going to be like all the way out here, and that should be good. Everything seems to be square and level. I'm gonna double check that. I think we're to the point now where I can actually go around and install all of the fasteners, make this super solid. I mean, even right now, like the bottom section's only just barely toenailed in with one screw, and um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing pretty good. The other thing too is I'm going to be putting another section up here and across here. The idea for that is I want this whole area to kind of be encapsulated so stuff can't roll off. And then I'm going to put my two monitors on that wall. Now, it may look a little funky from the front and the outside just having plywood sticking up, but I'm going to use some of this uh, black like speaker box carpeting to cover the outside edges of it. And also it'll keep the glare of computer screens from <laughs> showing outside and whatnot. And that's kind of the main thing. This desk is a little bit small as far as depth. So having the monitors mounted to a uh, horizontal surface will help quite a bit. Yeah, I was just thinking here, I'm gonna have to tie something into this corner to keep this from pulling towards me. Because right now, if I pull this towards me, we're torquing the whole thing and basically pulling up on that floor bracket. Putting the plywood on here is gonna help quite a bit with the rigidity, but uh, yeah, I need to put something across the back there on the floor and tie that in a little bit better. Anyways, here it is. We've uh, got a thing that's almost ready to be used or something. <laughs>
we got this here thing now. Um, it's exhausting drilling holes and driving in giant screws. We've got a couple of side supports here to help with this cantilever. And then on the bottom, we tied in that piece and there's actually a bolt and a bracket that picks up the track, which I guess I could show you that. Boom, there we go, it's kind of dark. I'll probably fix it in editing. And we've got all the screws in here. I even added a cross piece right here and screwed that off to the uh, plywood up top here. And that helps a little bit when you're pushing down on this corner and the whole thing's trying to twist. Obviously the plywood makes a really good shear wall, but that gives us a little bit more bracing in this direction when everything's trying to rotate. There's still a whole bunch of stuff on the floor, so I can't get directly underneath it. But as you can see, it's at a pretty good height. I, uh, I prefer my desk to be a little bit higher. That way when I'm reaching out and doing stuff with the keyboard and the mouse, I don't have to hold myself up. I can actually lean on the thing a bit. So yeah, I think this will be good. Okay, so it is getting dark, but I continue to press on. So we're getting the backboard put on here now. I promise when this is done, it won't look quite as insane. Here, let me grab a light. We've got our base desk down there, and then we've got this upper part. And I've got the computer monitors up here. I held them in place and figured out a good height for them. And then the monitors are going to mount like right there and right there. And then I just kind of wanted this whole thing to be an encapsulated area so stuff doesn't fall off and I can kind of mount things a little bit better. Don't worry about light glare and all that good stuff. So anyways, uh, we're continuing along here. Right now, this little corner piece, I, uh, I just temporarily put that in there while I was getting everything set up. This is one of those things, it's, it was raining a little bit today, but not really bad at all. So I figure I've already got all the tools out, might as well just press on and uh, get this thing as close to done as possible. Behold, a computer workstation. I still have to uh, put the carpet and everything on there, but we've got all the uprights up there. It's all braced good and solid. It's attached to the floor, it's attached to the wall. And I've got the thing set up at an appropriate height so I can get underneath it with my wheelchair. And if I get all the way up in here, yeah, that seems like a uh, pretty good height for everything. Okay, so I've got two of these uh, Scepter LED monitors. Pretty lightweight. But basically, they're going to go something like this. Uh, probably put a mount on there so I can tilt it in a little bit. Then have another one over here that's tilted a little bit. So we'll have that nice, like, V shape or whatever. But yeah, I think this is, uh, this is going to work well. It's kind of an insane mess in here right now. I had to move everything to get that installed. But this cart is also going away. This has my video editing computer on it. And I'm going to be switching back to using the Mac Mini, which will also link to the monitors. And then also the streaming computers going over there. But basically right here, we're going to be putting a big shelf and the power inverter is going directly underneath here. So I'm going to have a cabinet inside there with the power distribution and eh, whatever. Anyways, so now that we have proof of concept that we can mount things to these rails on the floor, it's going to allow me to work on this. And the power inverter is just about ready. Oh, I forgot to show you. I made some battery cables. Okay, uh, let me clean up this SD card real quick. Then we'll, look, well, then we'll take a look at those. Man, I can't believe I got all that work done today without getting completely soaked in the rain. Okay. Update on the battery, charger, power inverter situation. I got a bunch of this cable here. This is 4 aught and double aught welding cable. It's about 40 years old, but it's going to be perfect because it's pure copper. And yeah, copper and stuff. I've got two of these big battery boxes here. And I've set up our Odyssey Extreme batteries in these things. See, so yeah, we got all four of them in there. Anyways, I was looking at making some cables. I bought some little connectors. I was like, oh, I'll just solder these on here. No big deal. Actually, do I have that one in here? Well, I've since tried to crimp this one, but this was my first attempt at solder only. And as you can see, I kind of burned the wire and this is just kind of a mess. So what I decided to do was crimp and then solder them. But crimping giant cables is, yeah, not easy. I got for $42. If I remember, I'll put a link down below for this. I got this little eight ton hydraulic hand pump crimper thing from Amazon. This thing is really cool. It comes with a bunch of different dies, so you can do everything clear down to like 12 gauge wire and all the way up to, well, honestly, 
maybe four aught or bigger. The dies that it came with for double lock cable were actually a little large and it didn't crimp them quite the way I liked. So I wound up using the two gauge jaws that are in here, but basically you just pump this little handle and it squeezes these together. Just like that. And when it's crimped, you turn the valve and it makes a weird noise. So yeah, this is a super, super handy tool. And I'm always making battery cables for car stereo installation and stuff like that anyway, so. I figured for 42 bucks, it was probably a good thing to have in stock. But I figure I might as well show you the process here on how you make one of these cables. These are the wire cutters. As you can tell, they're, well, larger than smaller. Now, I know I need a piece for the power inverter. I don't know how long it needs to be. So we're just gonna cut this probably longer than it has to be, and I'll put one of the ends on just to show you. Oh. There we go. Then we take the end of it here that we want to put the connector on, and I'm just using a uh, utility knife for this. So you cut the end of the sheathing off about as far as you need it. Of course, everything with this wire takes a little bit more work than anything else you've probably ever done with wire before. There we go, that's probably good. Then we can peel this off of here. You can see here what I was talking about. The copper itself is good, but we do have a little bit of tarnished copper around the edges. So that's the reason I decided to solder and use flux is that process will clean this off. So I'm using this rosin flux, uh, paste flux or whatever. So we just take a little bit of this and get it on the ends and the edges of the wire. Doesn't take too much. There we go. Got just a little bit of the flux on there. Then we slide on our cable end being careful not to let any stray wires escape. There we go. Now, I actually stripped a little bit off of here. I don't normally like having that big of a gap, but for this instance, it'll be fine. Take up some of the slack here. And you can see it clamps down around it. And now we have a beautifully crimped end on here. Now we're gonna take our torch and heat just the end of this. We're not gonna get anywhere near the top of the wire. And I've got some 60-40 uh, rosin core wire we're gonna use, which has a nice low melting temperature. And you can tell we're heated up enough when the flux starts smoking. Then basically we just load a whole bunch of the solder in here. Basically we just keep putting this in here until the solder kind of fills up to the top and then we should be good. We'll let that cool for a while and then we'll have a nice solid connection. Okay, so this is the guide that I normally use when I'm setting up battery systems like this. It goes over series and parallel arrangements for everything. I'm not gonna lie, it made my brain hurt a little bit. So, typically I would think that, well, you just wire them in series, wire them in parallel, who cares? But as it turns out, if you just connect them however you want, the batteries are going to be supplying different amounts of load. So basically this wiring layout makes sure that each battery is getting pulled an equal amount. So this is our output to the inverter, that's our positive, that's our negative. But you can see it's coming off of different batteries in the different banks. So I use my favorite app here, Concepts, for the iPad, and I labeled each connection. So we've got one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three, four goes to four. Here's the space on the other side of the bus that we're going to be putting these batteries in. My thought originally was to just line them up in a row, but then I wasn't sure. Maybe we have enough distance here. Unfortunately, that is on this side of the bus, which is pretty muddy and, well, I can't just get to it whenever I want. It has to be not raining for a few days to be able to get there. Now, I took this picture a couple weeks ago, and of course I didn't bother measuring anything. Back to the Concepts app here. 
The nice thing with this is I was able to import the picture and then draw my own version of it. Basically, we've got the same thing here. I've got our 23 inches, if they're in this configuration, wide by 18 inches deep. And then also, I set everything up in a row and measured it that way. So we got 48 inches by basically 9 inches. Eventually, I was able to measure that lift bay. This is a top down. And we've only got 10 inches depth by about 50 inches length. So our 48 inches there is fine. And these battery boxes are probably closer to 10 inches. But anyways, they will just barely fit in this space. There's a couple of random bolts sticking out. I may have to clearance the lids on the battery box, but anyways, I say all that to say it, it took an afternoon of screwing around with, with this drawing app and making sure all the labels and everything are correct. Um, yeah. Yeah, a little frosty out here this morning. We're supposed to actually get some snow tonight, I guess, so we'll see how that is. Luckily, the sun is doing its thing out here. Only problem with snow and ice is then you end up with mud everywhere. It's not too bad yet. Okay, it's the next morning. Uh, as I was expecting, doing all that work yesterday has made my arms and elbows a little bit cranky, but that's why I wanted to continue on. When I, when I first built the bottom part of this desk, I was thinking, okay, that's good enough. I'll put the top part on later, but I'm glad I finished it. Today, I'm not gonna be of much use as far as building stuff, actually, for the next couple of days. I did order the monitor mounts. Those are supposed to be here this afternoon. So I'll get the two monitors put in there. That'll be sweet. I'm not gonna worry about the carpet and stuff till later. I looked up the prices of carpet and contact cement and all that, and to do everything, it was gonna be like 40 something dollars. And well, not really a priority right now since it's mostly just looks. But I'm planning on getting a camera mount and mounting it up here and having that come down. This is the camera that I use for live streaming right here. This is a Sony Alpha 5100. It's got a little flip up screen on it. Got a tripod mount on there. And then I also use a battery eliminator, which is basically one of these that connects to a power supply. So I'm gonna have this thing mounted up here somewhere to save even more desk space because this is where all the live streaming, well, a lot of the live streaming will be happening. I do still have the live view, obviously, and we're gonna be using that as much as possible because that thing's expensive to operate, but it's really cool. I like being able to mobile live stream and not have it disconnect. The nice thing is, even though these windows are pretty heavily tented, this, this vehicle has a greenhouse effect. Like, it's 31 degrees outside, and right now it's 68 degrees in here. And I haven't been running the stove at all this morning. So that is one cool thing. And then also having the curtains, basically I'll let the thing sit here in the sun, warm up during the day, then just before it gets dark, I'll close all the curtains, which helps with insulation a bit, and it stays nice and toasty in here. Regardless though, I'm gonna have to go pick up probably 20 bags of pellets or something today. With it getting this cold, and actually I think it's supposed to snow tonight, uh, go through a little more pellets than I did previously. Anyways, I think we're gonna call that good for now. Thanks for hanging out. It's always, uh, well, it's always a motivation to make these videos and keep me productive and doing things. Uh, a lot of times I could potentially take a day off maybe, but then when I do that, I feel like I need to be doing something and whatever. Anyway, so I appreciate you guys wanting to watch videos. It keeps me doing things and yeah. So I will catch you guys Thursday on the live stream and probably other videos after and or before that. See ya.